So good afternoon. Happy Monday. If you've seen the Frogs video, you'll know that Deborah Rogers is in custody right now in the Cherokee Nation Sheriff's Office Jail. Which is a very harsh way of learning that they have jurisdiction over you. So why is she there? She's there, as explained in Frogs video, because she was found in contempt and her bail was revoked. Why her bond was revoked. Why was she found in contempt? Well, it probably has something to do with the filings prepared for her by Bobby Law through Chile De Castro, small D De Castro. And Bobby Law, as we know, is Fred Gutierrez. Chile De Castro is Jose Maria De Castro. Small D. And what are they going to do about it? I'll tell you what they're going to do about it. They're going to do nothing. They're not going to give her her money back. They're not going to file any motions on her behalf. She does have a licensed attorney appointed to represent her now, so she should be getting competent legal advice again. But she's she's not going to get anything more out of Chili or, or Fred, that's for sure. Those scammers are going to cut bait and run. We know they'd cut bait and run because uh, Fred disappeared for like 10 years. 10 years after he got his after he got his little tickets and he got his conviction for driving on a for driving without a license and with no license plates he disappeared off the internet his brother i think exposed him to with a uh, with a scam like stop eft scam.org or something like that he got btfo'd off the internet and he he hit out he popped up again for uh, paypal patty when PayPal Patty was uh, charged with something, of course, he went away pretty quick and PayPal Patty got a real attorney because let's just say that a uh, young boy like PayPal Patty might uh, have the wrong kind of friends in jail. That'd be scary if you're a little feller like him. I'd be scared to go to jail. I'll tell you that right now. Jail's a horrible place. Like, I've never been in jail, but I've visited people at jail, clients, and uh, it's no good. I just, it's oppressive. It's gross. It, it, you leave there feeling dirty and, I don't know, it just eats away at your soul. I don't like it. I, I really feel bad for Deborah being in there. For those of you out there who are like, well, at least they did something. You know, at least they did something. John, you didn't do anything. You're just a bootlicker. You're just, you just want the judges to win, whatever that means. But you didn't do anything. At least they're doing something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, look at the something they did. It landed their client in jail. Congratulations. I mean, at least they did something, right? Are you still going to say at least they did something? Nonsense. Just all nonsense. <sighs> just all nonsense. Speaking of doing something, well, before I go on, uh, Deborah has very little, very little recourse against them. She can't, she can't really go after them for much of anything because they're not her attorneys, and uh, she can't like do an appeal for ineffective assistance of counsel based on what they did or anything like that because they're not attorneys. She can't report them to the state bar for suspension because or other discipline from the state bar because they're not attorneys. I mean, she might be able to report them for unlawful uh, practice of law or something like that. But, you know, what happens when, uh, when Chile gets charged, she just leaves the state. <laughs> I mean, does water off a duck's back for him, man. He's just boom, gone. <laughs> I guess his uh, bid for Ohio governor is uh, in the tank. Since he can't go back there to stump, since he's got that bench warrant. And, you know, Bobby Law is going to melt away back into the ether. Go back to small-time scams like he probably does on the daily. So, anyway, what about if a if a, a lawyer screws up? Like, let's say that C.J. Grisham, for whatever reason, ends up passing the bar exam. And he's able to actually retain his client. Or have his client retain him, I should say. And he prepares and files a lawsuit against that judge. Well, the first thing that's going to happen is the judge is going to hire an attorney. And that attorney is going to prepare and file a motion to dismiss based on judicial immunity. And at that point, 
At that point, reality is going to hit C.J. Grisham like a ton of bricks. And he's probably going to remember me and think, that asshole was right. But reality is going to hit him like a ton of bricks. And this whole time where I've been asking, what's your exception? What's your exception to judicial immunity? What's your answer? What what facts or case law can you cite that that exempt you from the judicial immunity doctrine in your lawsuit? Oh, I don't have to show you that. I don't work for you, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? He doesn't work for the judge either, but he's got to show that judge. He's got to convince that judge that he has an answer for judicial immunity. And then when he can't convince that judge he has an answer for judicial immunity, because he doesn't, there's no exception there. At least none that I can see. I mean, maybe I'm dumb and wrong. I'm just a first-year family law attorney, but, I mean, show me the exception. But anyway... If you can't answer that that question for the judge, the judge is going to grant the motion to dismiss. And then he's going to have to have a pretty embarrassing talk with his client, especially if the judge uh, grants costs and fees to the uh, defendants and his client ends up having to pay their filing fees and, and whatever costs for motions and things like that. But he's going to have to have that talk with his client. And then his client's going to be, able, well, can we appeal? Well, you might be able to appeal the lawsuit over the issue of judicial immunity, but that doesn't mean you're going to win it because still you've got to have a good argument. But you know what you can't appeal? You probably can't appeal that uh, that order denying the return of the firearm because that's probably past the time period for appeal. By the time you file your your lawsuit in November, you get it served, they file an answer, and then they file a motion to dismiss or something along those lines, and then and then an order comes down on that motion to dismiss, you're probably looking at February or March by the time that order could come down. I don't think I don't think that Texas has that long of a window for appeal. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. I doubt they give you that many months to appeal. And then you gotta have that that talk with your client about how no you can't sue the judge and no you can't appeal now. But at least I did something. At least I tried, is what you're going to say. And uh, I don't think that'll really satisfy anyone. And Hope your client isn't the litigious type because he might want to sue you for uh, for letting his the time period for his appeal run. Maybe. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. I feel bad for Deborah Rogers. You know, I wish her the best. I think it sucks to get punished before you actually get convicted of a crime. And uh, I wish all the worst to Chile De Castro and Fred Gutierrez. You guys are bastards. And you cost that woman her freedom, her ability to be out and about. And I hope you didn't prejudice the judge against her. If it's a bench trial, I hope you didn't prejudice the judge against her because I would be messed up. That would be so messed up. Anyway, thanks for watching. At least they did something. Have a great day.